Hello. Thank you so much for listening. This lecture reflects the progression from understanding the basis of psychology and research methods through the biological foundation of behavior. So let me tell you a little bit about psychology, right? So the story of psychology actually begins with the fascination as old as humanity itself, the mind. So for centuries, you had philosophers like Aristotle. They pondered the nature of thoughts, our emotions, and behavior. But it wasn't until like the late 19th century that psychology as a formal science truly emerged. So imagine like in the year 1879, William Wundt, he was a curious and determined scholar. He opens the very first psychology laboratory. What was his goal? It was to study consciousness scientifically. So he would bring in volunteers, he'll sit them down in a quiet room and have them reflect on their own thoughts and feelings through a process called introspection. So we we'll believe that if we could break down consciousness into its most basic parts, like sensation and perception, we could understand the mind as a whole, much like chemists breaking down elements. Meanwhile, we had James, William James. He was taking a different approach. He wasn't as interested in the structure of the mind, but rather in how it functioned in everyday life. So his groundbreaking book, The Principles of Psychology, I think it was written about in 1890. It argued that our thoughts and feelings have evolved to help us survive and adapt to our environment. He brought psychology out of the lab into the complex world of human behavior. And also wound precision and James realism focused on the field of psychology and this is how psychology was actually born, okay? So what is psychology? Psychology is the scientific study of how behavior and mental processes and how they affect a person's physical state and mental state and environmental. Psychology is a diverse and massive field. Psychologists are interested in every aspect of what people think and how they behave. Psychologists try to describe, they try to predict, and they try to explain human behavior and mental processes, as well as helping to change and improve the lives of people and the world in which they live. So take a look at this picture. This slide shows us where psychologists work. So you can take a look at the picture and you can see the person sitting on the couch with a the therapist. That's what a lot of people, when they, when you say psychologists, they visualize that. But psychologists do a lot, okay? They use the scientific method to study behavior and mental processes. They research, um, they study genetics, human behavior. They use hypotheses and theories to explain how we behave. They do a lot, which we'll study in this particular course. So let's take a look, closer look at subfields in psychology. So as the study of psychology has grown, it has given a rise to a number of subfields. The subfields of psychology are like uh, extended family with assorted nieces and nephews and uncles and cousins who may not interact daily, but are related to one another because they have one common goal. And in psychology, that is to understand behavior. So taking a look at this particular slide, you have developmental psychology, behavioral, experimental, personality, health, clinical and counseling, social and industrial and organizational psychology. Just gonna give you a high level overview of each. Throughout the modules, we'll get an in-depth overview of each. So looking at developmental psychology, this is the study of all aspects of human growth and change from prenatal period to old age. So it examines how people grow, how we change from the moment of conception to death. Then we have behavioral neuroscience. This is a subfield of psychology that mainly examines how the brain and the nervous system determine behavior. This is like the biological foundation of behavior. Then we have experimental psychology. This is a branch of psychology that studies the processes of like sensing, perceiving, learning, and thinking. And this is how we think about the world. 
several subspecialties of experimental psychology have become specialties in their own right. One is cognitive psychology. This focuses on like higher mental processes, including thinking, memory, reasoning, problem solving, judging, language, all that good stuff. Then we have personality psychology. This is the study of how personality is developed. So it asks the question, what makes us who we are? Then we have health psychology. This explores the relationship between psychological factors and physical illnesses or diseases. Then we have clinical psychology. This deals with the study of diagnosis and treatments of psychological disorders like clinical psychologists Counseling psychologists, they deal with psychological problems, but the problems they deal with are more specific, like for example, substance abuse. Then you have counseling psychology. This focuses primarily on like educational, social, and career adjustment problems. Then we have social psychology. This is the study of how people's thoughts, feelings, and actions are affected by others. So social psychologists, they concentrate on such diverse topics as like human aggression, liking, loving, persuasion, and conformity. Then we have industrial and organizational psychology. This subcategory applies principles of psychology to like practical issues in the workplace. Okay, then we have um, the expansion of psychology. So because the boundaries of science and psychology are constantly growing, okay, there have been three new additions to the field of psychology. There are evolutionary psychology, behavioral genetics, and clinical neuropsychology. So in evolutionary psychology, this considers how behavior is influenced by our genetic inheritance from our ancestors. Um, the evolutionary approach suggests that chemical coding and information in our cells not only determine like traits such as like hair color, but also holds the key to understanding a broad variety of behaviors that helped our ancestors actually survive and reproduce. Then we have behavioral genetics. This is another rapidly growing area in psychology. It focuses on biological mechanisms, such as like genes, our chromosomes, um, that enable inherited behavior to unfold. Behavioral genetics seek to understand how we might inherit certain behavioral traits and how the environment influences whether we actually display those particular traits. Then we have clinical neuropsychology. This unites the area of neuroscience and clinical psychology. So it focuses on the origin, origin of like psychological disorders and biological factors. Okay, this is a pop-in discussion. I like to ask these just to make sure that you're engaged and you're listening. If you need to stop the recording, please do so. So which one of these particular um, A through H coincides with the subcategory? So which one would define developmental psychology? If you guess E, that is correct. What about behavioral neuroscience? If you chose A, that is correct. Experimental psychology, if you chose H, that is correct. Personality psychology, if you chose F, that is correct. Clinical and counseling psychology, that would be C. Then we have social psychology. That would be B, industrial and organizational psychology. That would be D. And then we have health psychology. That would be G. Good job. These are some of the founders, uh, the roots of psychology. Okay, I wanted you to just look at them and, and take a look at them. Some of these particular people you may be familiar with, like uh, Sigmund Freud, maybe, B.F. Skinner. These are some of our founders of psychology. Okay. 
So psychologists, how do they do what they do? So psychologists study behavior and mental processes through the utilization of the scientific method. So the scientific method, this is an approach used by psychologists to systematically acquire knowledge and understanding about behavior and other phenomena of interest. It consists of four major steps. So first, they're going to identify questions of interest, okay? And then formulate an explanation. And then carry out that particular research design to support or refute the explanation. And then communicate those particular findings. So let's look at theories first, okay? So in using the scientific method, psychologists start by identifying questions of interest. So once the question has actually been identified, the next step in the scientific method is to develop a theory to explain the observed phenomena. So theories, they are these broad explanations and predictions concerning phenomena of interest. They are established on the basis of a careful study of the psychological literature to identify earlier relevant research in previously formulated theories, as well as psychologists' knowledge of the field, okay? So then looking at hypothesis, okay? The next step would be to devise a way to test the theory. So to do this, we would do a hypothesis. This would be created, okay? So a hypothesis is a prediction stated in a way that allows it to be tested. Hypothesis stem from the theories. They help test the underlying soundness of the theories. So research method. This can be thought of as a central ingredient of the scientific method in psychology. It provides the key to understanding the degree to which a hypothesis are accurate. So research methods, these are ways of collecting and analyzing data. Some research methods include archival research, naturalistic observation, case studies, surveys, correlational research, and uh, experimental methods. So looking at archival research, this is when um, existing data is used, such as like census documents, college records, newspapers, things like that. Okay, so this is this is a research that has already been completed and done. You just have to go find it. Okay. Then we have naturalistic observation. This is when the uh, investigator observes how or observes something naturally occurring, like a behavior. Um, and does not actually change the situation. So an example of this would be if, let's say someone wanted to see how the homeless lived or how they interact with one another, how they behave, they would go and plant themselves in a homeless situation and become homeless, but they would not interact with anyone. They'll just take note of everything that everyone is doing, okay? So that's a naturalistic observation. Then we have a case study. A case study, this is an in-depth, intense investigation of a single individual or a small group, okay? Um, an example of this particular case study would be, let's say that if you wanted to find out what makes successful people, okay? And you thought that successful people are CEOs. So what you would do is go interview one CEO or several CEOs, like five. Let's say you, inter you interview five CEOs. So you would ask them the same questions. Let's say you would ask them what time they wake up in the morning and everyone said 5.30. So you would say, okay, that's what makes you successful. Everyone wakes up at 5.30, that has to be it, okay? That's just an example, a simple example, but it's an in-depth, intense investigation of a single individual or just a small group of people. So you're actually targeting this particular people people because you're saying that CEOs are the most successful people that you know. So those are the people that you're going to take a look at. Okay. Then you have survey research. So in survey research, this is a sample of people are chosen to represent a larger group of people, which is a population. And they're asked a series of questions about their behavior, their thoughts and attitudes. So this is when you see those people in the grocery stores or wherever you are and they come up, can I ask you a couple of questions? You know, so they're, they're not actually choosing people, they're choosing people from this one population, regardless of, of anything where they live, 
<coughs> their occupation, excuse me, all of that. They're just choosing people from a particular population to actually interview, okay? And they're asking them a series of questions. Then you have your correlational or experimental. So for your correlational research, this is when two sets of variables are examined to determine whether they are actually associated or correlated. 